All right, so today we're gonna to tie everything together. We're gonna to be able to go from our uh, screen here. We're gonna have our scene actually know what things are. Buttons are red, we can't go to them. And if it's green, we can. And we can quit out, but more importantly, just to show you this again, we can go back and forth between the level select and the main menu. So, cool. Uh, let's, uh, let's get started. All right, so where we left off, we have our level select scene here. What I want to do today is I want to take a look at our button itself, and we're going to be adding some functionality to that so that the button knows a bit more about what it's doing. And then I also want to hook up our main menu to the level select and the level select to the main menu. So first thing I want to do is I want to go to my scenes, and I'm going to open up my button scene. So I call that, I think, level button or level select button, something like that. Do, 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 do. Maybe I didn't. Uh, base menu, blue. Man, if I scrolled right over it, I'm sure you guys out there are screaming at me about this. Main menu. There we go. Level button. All right. So my level button here. Now I'm going to add a new script to it. And the script doesn't need to really inherit from anything, but I'll inherit from Node2D. Um, don't need to take any template. And I'm going to save this into my scripts folder. It looks like I've got a couple scripts that are saved in the wrong place. I'll call this level button and I'll save it. And let's create it. Now there's a few things that I want the level to be able to control. I want it to be able to control what uh, level it displays it as, what level it is for, what scene it should load, what button texture it should use, and what um, star texture it should use. So that's a few different things we got to cover here. So first, let's cover um, what level it is. So we'll make an export of type integer. We'll call var level. Let's make a uh, let's make an export of type string. Ooh, this needs to be capitalized. We'll call this var uh, level to load. So what level we're actually going to load. Let's make an export of type texture for, this is going to be for the like blocked level. Blocked texture, export of type texture. Um, call this open. Oh, the var open texture. You can tell I've been doing a lot of stuff in Unity recently because I went from snake case to uh, Pascal case. So block texture var. Okay. So I also want to have a Boolean value that tells whether or not the level's enabled. So export bool var enabled. Okay, so I also need to know the um, score goal met and score goal not met textures. So let me actually organize this a little bit. Put these up here. Export texture var goal met. Export texture var goal not met. And then let's take this enabled and let's put it up next to the level stuff so that we can keep this nice and organized. And then I'll add a comment here. This is going to be texture stuff. And then this is going to be level stuff. All right, now the next thing I want to do, so I've got stuff about my level, stuff about my texture. I want to have a reference to the, um, the level button itself and the star texture itself. I also need to have a reference to the label. And you can do that on demand, but I want to do it a little bit shorter. So I'm going to say uh, var uh, level label is equal to... Okay, so I'm going to set the level label equal to dollar sign texture button slash label. I'm also going to set the button, so I'm going to call this var 
button is equal to dollar sign. Oh, and I'm going to get an issue from this, but we'll fix it in just a second. Texture button. So when you're creating a variable like this, you need to do it as an on ready so that it automatically loads as part of the ready function. So on ready var level label, on ready var button. Uh, what else do I need a reference to? The star. On ready var star equals dollar sign sprite. All right, cool. So now uh, what I want to do is I'm going to create this little function here that I'm going to call setup. Function setup. And what the setup function is going to do is just set everything to, to be what it should be. So we're going to say level label dot text is equal to, we'll do string level. So we're going to take whatever the level is and cast it as a string. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to make it a string so that it can be part of the text. Then we're going to do um, if enabled. Man, you can definitely tell I've been using Unity. Uh, if enabled, then we're going to do um, the button texture. That texture normal is equal to We'll call this open texture, else button dot texture normal is equal to blocked texture. So we're setting the button's texture, and then we need to set the star, which means we need to have another Boolean value to tell whether or not we've um, we've met the level goal. So export bool var level, we'll call this score goal. Score goal met. So we're going to check to see if the score goal met is true. So if score goal met, we're going to say star dot texture is equal to goal met else star dot texture is equal to goal not met. All right, cool. So here we go. All right, um, from ready, now we just need to call that setup function. All right, so let's save that. Let's go out of here. And now, the reason I put this on the level button itself, we don't want to be doing it on this version of the level button. This is just like a uh, an archetype. I want to go to my, not my level select scene, but my level backdrops. So in my level backdrops, I have my buttons. So this button is going to be for level one. This button is going to be for level two. This button is going to be for level three, level four, and level five. Um, we're going to say that only the first one is enabled. So uh, first one gets to be enabled and we'll say that none of them have their score goal met so this is what you would see when you first open the game then I'm going to set my textures so if I go into my art my UI so goal met texture goal not met texture uh, blocked texture is going to be red and then open texture is going to be green and I'm going to use this green because I think it goes better yeah, those look nice together. Um, oop, I meant to do that to all of them. All right, so I guess I could have done this to the archetype. Yeah, how about I just do that? <laughs> Sometimes I'm dumb. Uh, okay, so I won't change any of these, but I will change the, the textures. So open, and then blocked, and then goal met. And then goal not met. All right, cool. I'm going to save this. I'm going to pop back into my level backdrop. And that should have loaded it for all of them, which it did. Good. Now, OK, so they have their numbers. I'm going to save this. And I just want to play just this scene, not the actual scroll container, but just the black, the backdrop. And see, we have them mirror, 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 knowing what they are. Now, I want to make the 
um, the level button load whatever level it should load. So I'm going to go to my level button here. Let me go back in, or yeah, I want to go to my node and my signal I want to connect, actually, texture button. The signal I want to connect is pressed. I'm going to connect that to the level button. So when pressed, I want to load the scene. So it's get tree dot load scene. It's not reload current scene dot ah, change scene. And then the scene we want to change it to is that level to load. Level to load. And there we go. So I can get rid of this pass here. All right, cool. I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to go back to my backdrop. I'm going to choose level one. Oh, I only want it to do that if it's enabled too. So I'm going to add that little check in here. So on texture button pressed, if enabled. And then that way, if they shouldn't be able to go to that level, they won't. If enabled, get tree change scene. All right, so now going to my level backdrop, I'm going to choose this one. And now I want to go to my scenes, my levels, and level one here. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to choose um, choo -choo 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 -choo, copy path and level to load. I'm going to paste that right there. Okay, I'm going to save this. Now if I go to my level select scene and hit play, I should see nothing happen when I click on these, but if I click on this one, there we go. Loads that level one that I had. Now I want to be able to connect this to my game menu. So back to my scenes here, my game menu. Cool, there we go. So my to do, do so I want to go to main and my buttons, this one, there we go. Let's open this up. So on button one pressed, emit signal, oh. Play pressed, and then I want to go up here. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I already forgot how I had like this whole thing set up. Um, okay, so play pressed on main play press, get scene, change scene, and instead of changing it to here, I want to change it to my level select scene. So my level select scene is here. Copy path, and let's go into bigger mode because my laptop's tiny and paste that there. All right, cool. Now, if I play my game menu, that moves in, there we go, there we go. All right, cool. Now we just need to be able to go back to our game menu from our level select. So on my level select here, on my canvas layer, yeah, that's actually the right place to put it. I'm going to add a child node, and this child node is going to be a texture button, and I'm going to make this bigger. I don't think I actually made the back button yet, so I'm going to have to use something else for it. Um, UI, did I make a back button? I made a couple quit buttons. I made a continue button. All right, for now I'm going to say the quit button is the back button. So quit's going to go right there. Oh, that's way too big. You need to have expand, keep aspect centered, and then, yeah, you need to have expand. And then, is it rect? Is that where I find it? Your min size should be like 64 by 64. And then, there's something else I'm missing. Expand needs to be on. What else did I forget? Sometimes I forget about how to do stuff in Godot. Okay, super not. 64. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, cool. 64, sweet. All right, now I'm gonna connect this node pressed Oh, I haven't made a script for my canvas layer yet. So let's make a script. 
new script. And this script is what's going to go through and like essentially tell each level to know whether or not it should enable stuff. So I'm going to go to my scripts, level select scene, save, create. And then my texture button, node. I feel like I'm going really fast right now, but we're like 50 parts into the project, so hopefully that's not too bad. I'm going to connect it there. And what I want to do here is I want to load that main menu scene. So I want to do um, get tree dot change scene. And the scene I want to change to is the main menu. Copy path. There we go. And I want to go back here. Change scene to that. Make sure it's in quotations. One thing that was pointed out is I always use double quotations just because that's what I'm used to. But in GDScript and in Python, you don't have to use double quotations. You can use single quotations. So, all right, cool. So let's try this from the beginning. So game menu, play. Slides in, play, quit. <laughs> All right, interesting. So what happened there? Level select scene, scenes main menu panel. Oh, is it the, it's not the panel I want. It's the main menu panel. Is it the game menu? Is that the one I want? Sometimes I, oh yeah, it's game menu. Copy path. We're gonna replace this. Command V, there we go. All right, game menu, play, go back. Play, go back. Settings, go back. I do have a go back button, good Lord. Play, go back, play, play. Ha ha. Pause. Quit. Woohoo. All right. So that quit should actually probably take us back to the main menu instead of quitting out. And mobile applications don't do that. So there we go. We have our level select panel. Now we're going to need to talk a little bit more about saving data before we can make everything reflect what it's supposed to. But we now have this whole kind of loop that fits a real game. So. Uh, pat yourself on the back if you've come this far. That's awesome. You've done a great job. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter. Find out when I post new videos. Join my Discord. Tons of super cool folks there all talking about changes they've made to this and neat stuff they're doing. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.